Hey YouTube, this is Robert Ness 816 and you're looking at the Sansui Joycard SSS. So this is a controller that was made by Hudson Soft and in my personal theory I feel like this controller was uh, Hudson Soft's um, attempt at making a controller for their turbo graphics system. So maybe they used their turbo buttons and all that stuff like that just as a, a basic um, testing ground for their turbo graphics console. So this controller is pretty cool in that it's very well made. Um, uses the exact same button membranes as the regular NES controller so if you ever need to rebuild one of these things you can easily get a rebuild kit off of eBay. Um, also these A and B buttons you can swap these out with a, a NES controller. Um, but these controllers do have one flaw which I will show you uh, in a moment. So these controllers usually retail for around fifteen to I believe twenty five dollars on eBay because they're really not that common um, and they do have some cool features so besides having uh, varying levels of turbo you do actually have uh, simulated stereo sound so that would be um, with this little uh, slider right here so you can actually plug in headphones to this controller and you have an adjustable volume knob here which I'll need to clean up and also you have stereo so I, where is it on the back of this controller on the front or it is right on the front there so if I get closer so you can see you have sound shift so basically what sound shift is when it's on uh, when you hit left you'll get sound in your left headphone and when you hit right you'll get sound in your right headphone so it's kind of a weird stereo mix which is um, I guess interesting but also annoying um, and the way how you hook this up to your uh, sound device is with this plug. So this plug here is going to need some uh, attention. Um, so as you can see, this is your typical old school RCA plug, but it's a little crushed. So this will need some uh, TLC in order to bring that back to, uh, to being round. Hopefully the connections inside of it are still good. Um, also, as you can see, it's just filthy and dirty. So yeah normally this is a controller that I would actually pass up but since these controllers are sort of uncommon um, I figured what the hell so I actually got this controller in a trade for a, uh, a regular NES controller so I feel like it sort of worked out in my favor however it does get, does need some um, some cleaning obviously and as you can see by the wear here it has been used but um, overall the buttons on this are actually pretty tactile feeling still so we'll see I mean I guess whoever had it just had a I don't know I guess they weren't easy on their stuff so let's crack it open and I'll show you the uh, problem that plagues these things alright guys so taking apart the joycard SSS you can see that this one is pretty good actually the button membranes at least are nice but it is pretty filthy inside so it'll definitely need some uh, TLC um, getting back to the board so this is where this card kinda shines in that it's actually built better than a Nintendo controller since uh, Hudson Soft decided to use regular copper contacts on these instead of the uh, graphite material that uh, Nintendo used um, although I've yet to see one of those controllers with um, any type of uh, you know wear or flaking with that graphite material so getting on to the actual problem with these controllers. So this is what plagues most of these controllers here. So as you can see, you have these broken solder joints here. And that's as close as I can get. These broken solder joints here, which um, cause connection issues between the two boards. So typically what you'll have is a problem with turbo not working properly. And um, the... Um, the sound split or sound shift feature not working at all. So these four pins that you're seeing in the middle of the frame are the communication pins that go between the two boards and then if I move over, let's see if I can find it, there we go and then these other three pins here are the other communication pins that go between the two boards and as you can see the pads have lifted uh, completely off on one of them so I'll need to actually scratch the trace and just solder um, either a piece of wire or just try to connect it with solder um, back onto the board there so it makes a proper connection. So the reason why this happens is because between these two boards
So between these two boards, there is no um, proper spacers or anything or any type of support between them. So what happens is basically the parts, uh, the boards are actually just left to kind of, you know, float around the top of one another and having two boards just sit around on something that gets used a lot, dropped, thrown around, um, you know, is not a smart idea. So naturally those little solder joints are going to break under the strain of trying to support both of these boards. So what I'm going to do is just try to lower both boards so that they actually kind of press onto those plastic pieces there which are supposed to be the supports. So as you can see right now there is a space between them so pretty much it and I think I might be able to make up some plastic spaces just to stick in there. But all right guys, so I resoldered both connection points here. Um, so this is the other side of the board and those are looking all nice. So these actually weren't broken but I just resoldered them just in case. Um, so now the only thing left to do is to clean up this flux that's left on here and also clean up these contacts since there's a bit of tarnish on them. Um, I did add a bit of solder here since there was a bit of wear on the board from the um, deep head wearing through the solder mask. So I'll also clean that up and uh, maybe polish it a little bit. Um, totally unnecessary step, but I figured whatever. And this little fuzzy stuff here that you're seeing is actually, um, it's actually flux. It's not corrosion or anything like that. So this is just the old flux that was on here from when this board was uh, originally assembled. So I resoldered these. These were fine. Nothing was broken here. Uh, this side did need some more attention. So as you can see, one solder joint is considerably larger than the others, and that's because the, um, the little through hole there uh, kind of broke off the little pad or whatever you want to call it. So what I did was I had to kind of score uh, either side of the trace just to allow a, uh, a new anchor point for that uh, particular solder joint to. Uh, have both an electrical connection and also a place to sit. Um, this plug I was able to fix too, so as you can see it's uh, a lot nicer looking than what it was. Um, it's not 100% straight, but <clears throat> you can still fit a, uh, you know, a, uh, an RCA plug in there. Um, you know, a female plug, so it just goes right in there right now. And if I can do it with one hand, probably not, but... So it's now usable again. Um, this plug right here, I cleaned it up a little bit too, so it's still kind of scratched up and stuff, but it's uh, better than what it was. So let's get to cleaning up these contacts. All right, so I noticed some more broken solder joints, so the uh, audio jack needed to be resoldered, and the uh, little switch here before a stereo um, needed to be resoldered. So that's it. So I looked over everything else and uh, hopefully nothing else is broken on this board. Alright guys, so we have the uh, Sansui Joycard SSS hooked up to my NES. Um, so I'm using the audio jack in it just to check it out to make sure it works and I have it going through my Anchor sound core. Um, so I'm going to turn on, I have sound shift on, so we'll turn up the volume on the controller here. A little bit of buzzing there. So we'll see how the uh, if the sound works. I have no idea yet. Oh. Here's to work. So I'm gonna need turbo for this. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Hmm. It appears that we still have a problem with this controller. I know that's not supposed to happen. Um, so hitting A pauses the game. What the hell? <laughs> it 
There's definitely an issue with this controller, I think. Yeah. So now I have turbo. Clearly there's an issue with this thing still. Alright YouTube, so we're back. We're back, we're back, and my god, this has uh, been one hell of a trip with this controller. So we had um, two problems with this controller. Actually, if you count everything, it's four problems with this controller. So the broken solder joints, fix that. Uh, the broken solder joints for the mic jack, fix that. The broken solder joints for the stereo fix, fix that. Done. Easy enough. Two more problems. As you saw before when I was testing it out, this cord was bad. This cord was bad, and when it was shorting out, it also burned out this encoder chip. So, yeah. Now, it's fixed. Was it worth it? No. God, no. Um... But I figured I'm uh, making a YouTube video, might as well make it interesting, right? So what did I use to fix this? Well, I cut the cord back, obviously, so now I have a good length of cord in there. Um, where'd that damn chip go? This chip right here was um, removed, so this is your encoder chip. So this basically interprets the button presses that you do into movements on a screen. And since the cord was shorted out, I'm assuming it took out this chip too. And what I did was take a flood damaged controller from Hurricane Sandy. Yes, that's right. This thing has been flood damaged since 2000, what, what was that, 12 or 13? I don't really remember. But, um, yes, yeah, so that's um, what this controller was from. Um, it's been sitting all those years, basically just not being used. And, yeah. So, thanks, Scott, for giving me all of your flood damage shit because um, some of it actually did come in handy like all the shells to your controllers and this particular chip so thanks Scott thanks a lot and now I have this nasty controller here that I can use to make another video of about how to uh, remove yellowing from plastic maybe so let's stick this damn thing back together and end this video alright the moment that I've been waiting for all day Literally all day. You can see how it's dark now. So, things I've accomplished today. I've had lunch. I've had dinner. I've gone out and ran errands. I've fixed this game gear. I've edited pictures. And I've fixed this thing. Pretty much it. So that my, my whole day revolved around a fucking controller from the 80s. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I started this off probably at around 11 o'clock. It's currently 7.43 right now. <laughs> and, yeah, this is uh, my life. So, let's show what the finished product is. So, we're playing uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, so I'm going to die in like five seconds. But um, Oh, and also the sound is being played through my Anchor sound core, so really cool. And, uh, um, actually, I should put it into the little fake stereo mode so maybe you can hear it so when I go left and right you might hear the left and right sound channels getting louder and dimmer as you play I think that's in focus so we'll just play this game here I don't have any turbo buttons turned on so I'm gonna put A on because I think A is turbo is it? let's see nope nope that's jump well it looks like I'm gonna die I told you nope nope Told you. <laughs> so we'll play this again. Oh wait, is there a game over? I don't know. So you can hear it now how it gets louder. It's only briefly. But it's still pretty cool. So, really neat though, how this thing works. Um, it's like a half a second. Shut up. It's like a half a second of me showing you how it works, but yeah, really cool little controller. 
Um, the final product is something, I'm going to die again. The final product is something I'm happy with, so it works now like it's supposed to. It's late at night. Uh, I want to actually at least try to play something today, so yeah. Thanks for watching.